Welcome to Sparks Nevada, a set of the Tesla Giga factory and our Tesla semi truck uh, factory as well. So, uh, yeah, I can't believe it's been five years. Um, so, we, we, we unveiled the Tesla semi uh, five years ago. Um, it's been a lot that's happened since then, to say the least. Um, so, we were incredibly excited tonight to actually deliver our first production Tesla semi trucks. <laughs> So uh, it, people might wonder why build a semi truck, because um, if you look at the actual unit volume, it's it's small compared to passenger vehicles. So for passenger vehicles, you know, there's on the order of uh, almost 100 million that are sold every year, and whereas uh, tr you know, semi trucks, it's uh, like you know, four, four or five hundred thousand. Not even yeah, it's a couple hundred thousand class A trucks a year. Globally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no, no, no. Sorry, that's US. US. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's so there's it, in the, so the, in the U.S. there's it's called like 15 million passenger vehicles and a couple hundred thousand semi trucks. So it seems like a small percentage, but uh, it's actually 20 percent of U.S. vehicle emissions because you've, you've got a huge vehicle and it's being driven uh, all the time. So when you factor in the, the number of hours driven and the, the weight that it's carrying, it's actually although it's only one percent of vehicle production, it's 20 percent of vehicle emissions. Uh, and it's uh, over a third of, of all the particulate emissions. So from a sort of health standpoint, particularly in like cities, this is a huge uh, impact, like it's gigantic. We've been through hot, cold, snow, rain. We've been putting this thing through all its paces in the lab as well as in the real world. You know, the simulation team has been doing an incredible job of being able to scale all of that you know, in the uh, virtual side. And the other thing is that we're gonna take these and we're gonna put our money where our mouth is. And we're gonna put these on into our own fleet, into our own supply chain. And we're gonna use this to transport goods between our factories and our suppliers because we believe in it, not just from a mission perspective and a cost perspective, but because we want to close that feedback loop. We got to get that learning as fast as we can. We want it straight from the drivers, we want it straight from the service techs that are working on it. We're going to take all that data that's coming in and continue to refine the product and make it better, just like we do on the car side. We're using the uh, carbon overwrap sleeve. So essentially, we're using the, 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 the plaid uh, Model S, Model X uh, powertrain. Uh, and um, but it, we're, we're and, and actually enabling the two of the drive units to actually disconnect uh, yeah. so that they're not uh, free spinning. Uh, yeah. So the efficiency is actually much greater in cruise. Yeah, this is really unique. I mean, we're going with a tri motor system. One of them is constantly engaged, so that's for maximum efficiency. You're getting on the highway, that's doing the bulk of the work, and it's operating at the peak efficiency point of the entire drivetrain. And then the other two units are for torque and acceleration. So when the driver needs it to get their job done, whether that's you know, getting out of a loading dock or it's on the road they need to pass somebody, you're tackling a grade, you have the torque and power to do it. And the cool thing is that these are clutched automatically, so no driver input needed, but it's also seamless. So the highway efficiency unit is cruising along doing its thing, and if the driver puts their foot to the floor, the torque unit spin up, clutch engages, and takes over, and it does all of that before we've maxed out the torque on the efficiency unit, so it's completely smooth. There's no turbo lag or jerkiness or anything like that. No driver input needed. It's smooth, both in terms of acceleration and deceleration for regen. It's uh, really cool happening all behind the scenes. So that, that truck's clocking it at 82. That, that's weighing 82,000 pounds, and when you see that pass shot again, you'll notice You'll notice that speedometer is climbing. You know, we're going 6% and accelerating up that grade. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is where it comes in. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's, not, it's like driving a, a normal car, not like driving a truck. Um, you, it's just that you're, you're moving 82,000 pounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and, a, a, any highway grade you come across, you can tackle at speed. Yeah. You know, there's no compromise. No slowdown. Nope. And the other beauty is that you've got all this power going up, but you also have it going down. And what that means is you've got regenerative braking. So rather than using a jake brake or engine braking like a diesel truck does, where you have to worry about hitting your shifts. If you miss a gear, you're onto your brakes and potentially in a runaway situation. You don't have to worry about any of that. There's no shifting, no nothing. And so the regen recaptures all that energy as you're going down these grades. But on top of it, it also is a safer system for not just the driver, but everybody on the road, because there's no gear to miss. But yeah. Standard trip, down the five, up grapevine, through LA, traffic, construction. You know, we got the bypass on the way station, but you know, running full 80, or just under 82, full deliveries, nothing to hide. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, real, real world, re, re, it's, yeah. Basically. We did take one restroom break for, there, there is a required mandatory 30 minute break within the first eight hours of operation. Okay. Took a small restroom break, but that was it. Yep. All right. I mean, the team's done a lot of awesome work. I mean, we, yes. we went into the wind tunnel um, with this really cool model, rolling road, the whole nine yards, and pulled in a lot of the learnings and all of our features from the car side that you know, give us such great real world efficiency there. And really want to make sure that the you know the truck and the trailer have to work together. You know this is a combination. This is not just the truck. If you optimize one, you actually might disrupt the whole combination. And so we spent a lot of time, both you know virtually, but also in the wind tunnel to make this happen. And really some next level engineering to uh, uh, everything they had to do there. And you know it means that we've got a really efficient truck. Uh, like with basically no training, you can drive this. Um, you know you have to think bigger when you're driving it. <laughs> Uh, but it's not like, uh, it's not hard to drive. It's really easy. And we put the center, it put the seat in the center for max visibility, low floor, you can stand up in the cabin. Yeah, and that's actually like a really big deal. I mean, and, I mean, you're a tall guy, Elon, like yeah. you're able to stand up just fine. And the you know, nice thing is, is that if you're a truck driver and you're out during the day and it's, you know, it's cold, it's snowy, whatever, you can get in and you, this isn't a sleeper cab, this is a day cab, you can still stand up and you can you know, shed your jacket, put it on the wall, all in the comfort. You can put your coveralls on while in the cab. So if you have to go do a dirty job, you can do that comfortably as opposed to being out in the elements. So that's, you know, that level of space is you know, unheard of. And we were able to do that with some pretty innovative packaging. And on top of it, there's plenty of cargo storage, you know, for drivers that need to bring any tools, other equipment along. And not to mention, you know, we've got the plugins, the wireless charging, everything they need on the uh, electronic side as well. Obviously, to charge a, a truck like this quickly, you need a high power charger. So we developed a megawatt class charger as it's capable of charging at a megawatt to DC. Yeah. Um, and it's our next generation immersive cooling. So it's, it's liquid cooled. Uh, so you don't need like a gigantic elephant trunk of a cable. You can actually have a small, small cable and that cable delivers uh, a megawatt. So the future of transport obviously requires a sustainable energy infrastructure. So you gotta have all, all aspects of the, the energy question answered. Uh, sustainable power generation, uh, then you've got to store the power, and then you transfer the power to the vehicle. So the, like the three pillars of a sustainable energy future are sustainable power generation uh, with uh, solar and wind. Uh, I'm actually a fan of nuclear, um, <laughs> which we should support. <laughs> um, and and uh, geothermal and many others. But things that are sustainable uh, long term, we, we uh, you, you, but, but things like wind and solar are intermittent, so you have to have the battery pack to store the energy so when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, you still have energy. And you can also buffer the power so you're not overloading the grid with spike loads. Yeah, and our semi-customers are actively deploying this today. And you know, we're working with them so that they have a the pathway to get towards a you know, 100% sustainable future. You know, but we have all of this at our disposal, you know, commercial solar and Megapack. And you know, the Megapack is great because not only can it do things like peak shaving or some of the other uh, energy modulation, but it also provides a form of redundancy and backup. I mean, if we're gonna ask you know, a fleet to take on these trucks and run them, they need to ensure that they're gonna be able to charge them and keep their fleet running and even the amount of power outage. And that's one of the things that we can do with the Megapack on site as well. All right, so um, yeah, uh, thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's, it's been a long, five, long journey, a long f five years, uh, but uh, th this is going to really revolutionize the roads and I think ma make the world a better place in a, in a meaningful way. Um, so thank you for your support uh, through all the years.